Now these are specific to the actual mobile bases we have, not to the brands. Each brand makes different models, so keep that in mind. Welcome to Busy Bee Woodworking. Today we are in the shop and currently we are remodeling a little bit. We're moving some new tools uh, into new places, some existing tools into others. Just as we've worked in the shop, we're starting to learn that workflow. Tools can be used in other places a little bit better than more and we can capture a little bit more space because let's face it, in every spot shop, we all need more space, no matter how big it is. But that being said, there's a lot of differences in mobile bases. It's not just a base with wheels on it. You got tons of different brands out there, tons of different styles, and ones that work better in certain applications than others. So through this video, we wanna highlight in a few or several here, mobile bases, the differences, and why they're better in certain applications. Also, if you guys can comment below and participate in this video by sharing different mobile bases that maybe you have used and liked or disliked and why. That way we can all get a better understanding of mobile bases before we go to make those future purchases so we end up with the right one the first time and not a headache. So with that being said, let's get into it. Now, when it comes to making a decision on which mobile base you want to purchase, you want to think about three different things. First of all, you want to address the size of the machine. Now, that means not only the weight, but also the footprint that you need to fit the mobile base around. And in the descriptions of the mobile bases, it will tell you how much weight load it can hold, but also the dimensions, both length and width, that the mobile bases can be made into. Another important thing to think about that a lot of people forget before making the purchase is how many times you move this tool. If it's something that you move a lot, you're gonna want the convenience of being able to unlock it, move it, and move it back into its place and relock without having to constantly bend over um, and really putting that strain on your back. And lastly, let's face it, price point. That always comes up. Now the cheapest doesn't always mean it's the worst, nor does the most expensive mean it's always the best. It has to do with the other two things we just talked about, your overall dimensions and overall use of the tool. That's really gonna come down to it. So don't skimp on this, but you don't have to also splurge. Okay, so let's dive into five different mobile bases. Four specifically I actually use here in the shop every day. And then one I decided to throw in there because it's really unique design that's a little bit different than I've seen out there in the market. Okay, so this one right here we have is the WEN mobile base and this will actually hold up to 500 pounds. So it can do quite a bit of heavy load. Honestly though, I only have it on my little 14 inch bandsaw, which isn't very heavy. But I got it because of actually the footprint. This was one of the ones that I could make the smallest and these 14 inch bandsaws don't have a big footprint whatsoever. The other reason for this style in this application is in my shop, bandsaws are pushed to the side and when, they're need, when they need to be used, we pull them out. So I wanted something like this that I could quickly engage with my feet. Now, when you have it locked like this, you can move it around and you can easily kick these up. And when you kick them up, the wheels will flip up and these footprints will lock it in place so you can make your cut. So when it comes to a tool that's gonna to be used and moved quite a bit, this would be the style that I would recommend. Um, because of that you know, flexibility of being able to move it when you still have stuff in your hands even, um, and not having to constantly bend down to loosen it, to get it to be able to be mobile. So that's why I went with this one. All right, so now we're actually taking a look at um, the Grizzly model that is actually really similar to the way the WEN model is by having these little foots, feet. But I will tell you that these engage the actual foot, not the wheel. 
So a little bit different. Um, I don't really see that much of a difference with it. Maybe it might hold up longer, but like I said, I don't really see too much of a difference with it. Um, the big difference I see is actually in this construction. See this right here is a solid piece. It's not that um, riveted piece that you have to put the bolts through like on the wing. So this actually makes it much more adjustable and accurate. So you can really squeeze in a piece and get it tight if you need it to be. And then you just tighten these bolts down and it pinches this and holds it into place. Where the WEN one, you're kind of held to where screw holes line up. Now they do make the ones oval style, so it helps you um, with positioning with that. And I didn't have too many issues with it, but something to think about. So same concept, you know, a tool that's moved a lot. So we want the feet, the foot pedals to be able to move it. Um, just a little bit different though in the construction. Okay. One thing I actually almost forgot to point out on the Grizzly one here is all four of the wheels are these rubber casted. They're really nice quality and the bearing on them is really, really nice. So it's definitely an upgrade specifically from the Wen, which just has this little kind of cheaper plastic, not really heavy duty bearing, or also just like the Shopbox one, um, not as good quality on the wheels as those Grizzlies. Okay, so right now we're looking at the mobile base from Shopfox. Now, this one is different from the other two that we just looked at. And the reason why is you actually have these feet that you have to screw down. So every time, and there's actually four. So you have to bend over, essentially, every time you want to move this thing, loosen these up till the wheels come down and are engaged, and then you can move it around. I went with this style because in my shop, the table saw is only moved when I'm cleaning. That's it. Otherwise, it's stationary in the center of the shop. So I'm not having to bend over and move it when, you know, all the time. So it's not too bad to be able to have to do that. Um, the other thing is I did add this extension piece to it. Um, and then that just helps support this router table with everything still now being mobile for those cleaning days. So it's not as convenient with, you know, not having the foot pedal and essentially having to engage four different screws and bend over like that. But if it's something that you're not gonna move that much, and you want it to be sturdy, I do find that you won't accidentally kick these and you know engage the wheel on accident. Once it's screwed down, I mean, it's pretty much gonna stay there until you decide to move it. Okay, so here's one I haven't actually used or had, but I did wanna show it in here because of the versatility. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much just the feet and the wheels and you can attach it to a three quarter inch piece of plywood. That gives you this flexibility that you can see right here to even use it on a lathe. So I thought I'd just throw this one in here so you could see that that is also an option. All right. And lastly, we're gonna look at here, we have an HTC mobile base. Um, it's actually a three wheel base and that is what my 15 inch planer goes on because once again, this guy gets moved out on milling day and moved back out of the way. Um, I did not choose this mobile base. When I bought the planer used, this was what the mobile base they had with it. It has a big um, capacity for weight and this guy weighs a lot. Um, but to lock it, there's actually pins that you have to screw down and they screw into the wheel and then pinch the wheel so it cannot turn. And like I said earlier, it's only got three wheels, two stationary up in the front and it's got one pivot here in the uh, back so you can move it around and pivot it into the positions that you need to. So um, this 
I probably wouldn't have chosen myself, first of all, because it's got this odd kick out um, and it's not squared up, but it actually works pretty nice in this application. I don't know if they even sell these anymore. I've never seen one until I actually bought this planer, but something I thought I'd show and share with you guys. So that's gonna wrap things up for today's video. Um, I hope though, when you guys watch this, that you actually got some more knowledge about mobile bases and some things to think about before you make that purchase, because there's nothing worse than you going ahead, putting a mobile base together, getting that heavy equipment on there and realizing, wow, I should have bought a different one. So I hope that you've got to explore a little bit more. I'm gonna put some links down to some mobile bases um, that you can purchase. And if you are interested and you use those links, it does help us out. So thank you, we do appreciate it. Also, um, if it's your first time here, we would love to earn your subscription. It's the little red button down there below. It will help us out immensely. And if you guys are part of that returning crew that has been supporting us so much, thank you. It is very, very appreciated. And we cannot thank you enough for that. That being said, thanks for buzzing by. Go make some dust. Oh man, there we go, all the way on the butt.